Welcome to Speak Live. Today, I continue with Testimony Part 2, which I will call Losing a Loved One. Before moving on, let me say a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for the Holy Spirit to guide every word that comes out of my mouth. I ask for every listener that hears this message to be touched by your Holy Spirit, to be strengthened and encouraged. I pray for lives to be changed and hearts to be softened. In Jesus' name, Amen. I will go right into my testimony. So, as I mentioned in part one of my testimony, I was very encouraged because God allowed me to see my dad's heart to be transformed. Yet, in the same time, I felt like I needed to go visit my dad. Therefore, I made arrangements to fly to Germany. The day before flying to Germany, which was the 10th of November, 2019, my dad and I spoke per FaceTime. He was at home and very excited that I was coming to visit him. But he looked so weak and fragile. It was so painful to see. Finally, after a 10-hour flight, I landed in Germany, excited to get to see my dad. I rented a car and drove another two hours to my dad's house. I arrived at his house, knocking at the door, but nobody opened the door. Let me tell you, in that moment, my heart started beating out of my chest. I was trying to call my sisters, but my cell phone died on me. It wasn't a pleasant moment. All I could do was sit in the car, pray, and wait for someone to come home. Not sure how long I waited, but eventually my stepmom came home and updated me on the circumstances. The only thing she told me was that my dad started coughing last night. Therefore, they had to call 911 and they had to bring him to the hospital because he needed immediate treatment. They had to remove the fluid in his lungs for him to not choke to death. You can only imagine the fear that came over me. Right away, we drove to the hospital, which took another 45 minutes. Finally, I stepped into my dad's hospital room, and I got to see something I was not prepared for. I saw my dad, full of bruises and torn skin, I saw him laying there, incoherent, yet at the same time, uncontrollable. He threw his arms up in the air, and every time his arms came back down, he hit the corner of the bed, hurting himself. That is what tore open his skin. I kept trying to talk to him but no response. I held his hand in order for him to no longer hurt himself. It was so painful to see my dad, whom I have known and always looked as, to be so strong, laying in this ho oh, hmm, I'm sorry, laying in this hospital bed, so fragile and 
broken. I wanted to speak to the doctor. I wanted to find out what is going on and what we were able to do in order for him to be coherent. The doctor finally came into the room and he plainly told me that there is nothing we can do. He said we just keep him as comfortable and pain-free as possible. He informed me that my dad had only a few days to live. Brothers and sisters, when I say I wasn't prepared for this, I mean I wasn't prepared for this. I was confused, hurt, angry. So many emotions were running through me. I didn't understand anything. I didn't understand why nobody told me. It was a shock to hear that my dad only had a few days to live, not months, but a few days. I say it again. I did not understand because all of us, meaning my sisters, we made plans to spend Christmas and New Year's with my dad. I was devastated and broken. I started to pray in front of all my sisters and family members who were present, and I know God gave me the courage to do so. I was able to feel the pushback of the enemy in this hospital room, but I just kept praying and holding my dad's hand and whispering in his ears how much God loves him. After a while, I felt in my spirit to sing Amazing Grace. Just to clarify, I am not a singer. This is not something I usually do. Yet, I ask my sisters if it is okay if I sing, and they agreed. I started singing Amazing Grace with teary eyes, scratchy voice. But let me tell you, all of a sudden, peace came into the room. Every one of us that was present was able to feel peace fill the room. My dad's face softened. And we all just looked at each other. I also want to point out that I was singing Amazing Grace in English. And to let you know, none of my family members do speak English. Yet, God showed up. From this moment on, I have been singing Amazing Grace. From the first day I arrived which was Tuesday, till Friday, when my dad went to be with the Lord. Very difficult situation to see your dad take his last breath. There was so much I wanted to talk to my dad about, and unfortunately didn't have the chance to do that anymore. I didn't even have a chance to say goodbye. Difficult is not the right word, but how do you really express the pain that you feel when you see your dad, someone you love, to take his last breath? Brothers and sisters, anyone who has lost a loved one will understand the pain Yes, even though we know they went to heaven, it still hurts. Yet, God, faithful God, moved mightily in an environment that was filled with unbelief, pain, and hopelessness. 
no one was able to deny what happened when peace walked into this hospital room. God made himself so real to all of us. What God has done in my family since the day of my dad's death is a testimony in itself. The domino effect it had and still has on my family is powerful. And I say, all glory be to God. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you that God is able and God alone can turn a mess into a message, a test into a testimony, a trial into a triumph, a victim into a victory. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and the cross. It does say in Acts 14.22 that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Let's continue in the faith. Brothers and sisters, this testimony doesn't stop here. The next step was to prepare my dad's funeral. But I will stop here and continue this testimony in another video called Testimony Part 3 because I don't want this to be too long. But I would like for us to pray together for we know the Lord has given us a secret weapon, prayer. This weapon is something that the enemy does not have that the enemy cannot stop, that the enemy cannot thwart. There is no defense for this type of weapon. Please say this prayer after me. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks and all the honor you deserve. You deserve all the glory and we thank you for the privilege of being able to take everything to you in prayer. And we know that you hear our prayers and answer our prayers. For your word says so. You, God, see every broken heart. May it be because of loss of a loved one, or may it be because of other circumstances. We ask for comfort. We ask you, God, to show us how to deal with this pain how to deal with this hopelessness, how to deal with this loneliness and depression that wants to cripple us. Help us to find peace in your presence. That same peace that walked into my dad's hospital room let the Prince of Peace walk into our homes and into our most inner being. Your word says to pick up a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. We ask you, God, to give us the strength to praise you when the spirit of despair wants to overpower us. Let us never forget that there has never been a faithful friend like you who shares our sorrows and knows our hearts. Thank you, God Almighty, 
for loving us with an everlasting love. We pray that you, Jesus, baptize us with the power of the Holy Spirit and that we choose to surrender to the Holy Spirit's guidance. We thank you for the strength and the comfort that can only come from you. We pray that we will be a comfort and a strength to others. In Jesus' name, Amen. Brothers and sisters, I am asking all of you to start sharing your testimony. Your story can be the key to unlock someone else's prison. Be blessed.